Hello, I'm Rico Cavellia, and I want to welcome you to your Ageless Body Self-Care Training. And the title of this training is Time Conscious Living. Now, that's something I, I think that not many people have even heard of, let alone are actually doing it. So this is going to be a really interesting and really some unique information that I'm sure you probably haven't heard about. So you go... You're going to really want to pay attention to it. This is really some really interesting stuff, and it's going to be really beneficial for you. And as with all of our trainings, we want you to know that our bodies are meant to be healthy and long-lasting. And all the, these most common health challenges that so many people are dealing with are not natural, and we do not have to accept them as normal. So our goal is to offer you the latest cutting-edge, proven scientific in, information and strategies that you can trust from some of the top experts in the world, that you can begin using immediately to take the very best possible care of that amazing gift you have, your physical body. <laughs> so this is about creating your healthiest, most energetic, best functioning, long lasting body as possible. So let's get going. So our guest expert today, he is an author, he's a speaker, he's a workshop leader, and he's a, a health researcher extraordinaire, and I like to call him, uh, he's, he's, he's a walking Wikipedia of wellness, and my friend, Adam Bergstrom. So Adam, thank you so much for coming here today and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with us. Thanks for inviting me, Rico. It's good to be here. All right. So let's get going right away. So time conscious living, that's a really interesting uh, concept and idea. So, so tell, tell us, what's your definition of what time conscious living is all about? Well, it's following the rotation of the planet, which goes around and around and around for billions of sunrises and sunsets. And we've been programmed into it. There's a lot of information now about blue light and how it affects us and all of that. Well, that has to do with timing. Blue light has a time. Blue light is going to be at your greatest at noon and it should be at your least during the night. In fact, the incandescent light bulb was invented to be the color of firelight, to have frequencies of blue were, that weren't in there because back in the day, General Electric scientists knew that blue would interfere with your sleep. So the timing has been around for a long time and it's been known for centuries and centuries and started being acknowledged by a professor, Franz Halberg, who invented the term circadian about a day rhythm. And our daily rhythm is much more important than our seasonal rhythm, especially in the temperate climate. In the Arctic, maybe they're equal. That's why our pineal gland is shrinking. Animals by the equator don't have a pineal gland. Uh, up on the Arctic, a seal, a baby seal, one quarter of its entire brain is pineal gland because it's important to know what time it is and least important at the equator. Why is that? Why is it least important at the equator? The, uh, because it's seasonal. You don't need to know anything about the season at the equator, right? It's always eternal summer, so you don't need to know it. But up in the Arctic, oh, you no better season? know oh, it's yeah, either there. time to hibernate or time to split. Okay, right. yeah, there's no, there's no seasons at the, at the equator, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So it's seasonal, but the pineal doesn't have – it has to do with the daily uh, rhythm too, which is more important, far more important, because we sleep and wake and eat and hunt and everything else by day or night. Bats hunt by uh, night, rats hunt by night. Human beings are day or diurnal creatures is a fancy word for it. And anyway, it's been investigated for a long time and the BS got put into it in 1960 when the Eugenic Center of the United States, it's now Cold Springs Harbor and it's not called the Eugenics Center anymore but they decided to make it illegal to have time outside of the body and it had to be inside in your genes so they could sell genes. So Franz Halberg was banned. You'll find Wikipedia finally through pressure has acknowledged them with at least a page, a very short page, but the new chronobotics you read about is basically BS. 
it has to do more with growth pattern and why they don't like it. It's astrology. You know, the chart. Whoops. <laughs> See it here? Yeah. No, in my headphones, it's hard to. Uh, yeah. There we go. There we go. See that? We're a clock. Digital, digital clocks separate us from the environment because a clock is a circle. We go from an esoteric uh, language, they call the color wheel the third chakra, and it spins around. Isn't it interesting how you go from red through violet and magically you're back in red again? How does that happen? The same with a clock. You go from 12 to 12, around and around. But from the color wheel, you get free and go up to the clock wheel, which is number four. Now we're talking esoterically, but esoteric counts too. They don't <laughs> want <laughs> Let's don't get too esoteric here. <laughs> no, I will. Then we will follow you. So I won't get too esoteric, but let's just say that the clock has to do with how plants eat light. Their food yeah. is light. So a tree is going to eat your food, its food earlier because on the ground, you're not getting any light there, right? It's up in the tree. So a tree actually gets activated at that time and a bush later and a plant and a root gets the leftovers, the infrared radiation and the forest floor at the bottom. It's well known in ecology that there's three levels of forest uh, overstory, understory, and then the root system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they divide it into three or four. Yeah. So, so the basic concept is that all of nature, in fact, the whole universe is operates in cycles, right? And, and, and in rhythms, that's just like night and day. and. The, tide coming in and out. Everything in the universe is a cycle and it's a rhythm, you know, and we're part of nature, right? So therefore all these cycles and all these rhythms are also affecting us. But as we've been here on this planet for so long and, 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 and come up with all this technology and things, which had their real benefits, but they have a little downside too. So, you know, having more light and staying up late and doing all these things that we can do with technology has actually put us out of our natural rhythms and taking us out of being in tune with nature more. Would you agree with that? Oh, it's affected our health uh, dramatically. Uh, yeah, uh, the artificial lights, artificial eating, eating at night, working right. through the night. Uh, people used to sleep in shifts though, because of the fire, they, they had predators out there, but mm -hmm. they still had to accommodate the light. They didn't have an electric bulb. They had fire, that was right. it. Yeah, now so we have an electric bulb, it's messed us up, and we have uh, all night restaurants, and we eat breakfast at any time we want right. to, and it's gotten confused, and our body, through millions and millions and millions of sunrises and sunsets, has got used to a regular pattern, and it's harder to get rid of that pattern. Like, it was harder to come out of the ocean and start breathing air. It took a long time. You just didn't come out like that. I saw this technology. And with our, our bodies haven't haven't kept up with all this technology because again we're part of nature so our bodies were programmed to be in tune with nature and to, to follow these cycles and rhythms like when the sun comes up we're supposed to get up and we're starting to start to be active when the sun goes down we're supposed to slow down and rest but we we changed all that so but our bodies haven't kept up with technology right yet in so-called primitive societies you can tell a primitive person show up at this time tomorrow exactly and they'll know. No <laughs> wristwatch. They just show up. And, and think about it. Think how important timing is. Right now, we're doing an interview. Suppose you didn't give me a time. How would I know how to connect with you? How would you know how to connect with me? Right. Phone calls work. Our society works on clocks. Unfortunately, mostly it's artificial clocks. Yeah. But there is a clock system going on Inside on a of, daily basis, yeah. on a yearly basis, on a monthly basis, on a lunar basis, on a tidal basis, et cetera, et cetera. And we're, a modern man has become divorced from it. Right. We're out of time, right? We're out of time, we're, we're yeah. Time. Well, you know, I play drums. It's all about timing, right? It's all about right. time. you got to be on the right time. Or if you get off time, it throws everything off, right? Is that, that's a good analogy. I just thought of that right, right now. Yeah, everything. Any musician knows timing. Yeah, in right. fact, why do, why do musicians live longer when they don't take drugs? Now, I'm not talking about that, but otherwise, conductors and musicians actually yeah. live longer if they would stay away from the drugs yeah. because... They're in time. 
and also because we it's so much fun we love to play you know, music it's 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 the most fun thing i can really think of to do i mean as much as i like to do physical things too like well of course playing drums is kind of physical but i mean i like to s skate and swim in the ocean all these things but when we're playing music with other people and you're t you're harmonizing and you're in time and you're locked in in the group together it just feels so good so that's that's a really good analogy adam is that that's what we need to do in our, in our, throughout our whole day, daily life. If we can lock into the natural rhythms of life, we're going to feel so much better and we're going to be much healthier and we're going to last longer. Yes. There's even complicated musicians have done much for physics. There's something called temporal dissonance, which was invented during the middle ages where you can play one instrument and get two instruments out of it magically by splitting time into two. Yeah. Temporal dis. Uh, uh, Ornette Coleman did it, and uh, he took it from the Renaissance when when they were back in uh, Mozart and Beethoven days. Yeah, it's just like like a tuning fork, you know. There's a term for it. It escapes me right now what what it's called. Uh, but you know, if you have a an instrument, say like in a music shop, a bunch of guitars on the wall, and you get a tuning fork, it'll, it'll resonate with all those instruments the same the same tone, the same rhythm. It's, 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 it's kind of really amazing. Well, another really good, what is the term? I wish I could think of that term. Uh, it's like, uh, say if two women live together for quite a long time, pretty soon their periods will get into rhythm. There's a term for that. What, what is that called? Uh, they deny it, but it's true. I can't true. think of it. Yeah, I can't think of it. Anyway. Resonance. Okay. Res well, that, yeah, resonance, but there's another one too. Anyway, mm. okay. But not only that, let's go into the, the, the main thing. Uh, yeah, the main thing is people want to know about, okay, so how does this apply to how we should be eating, how we should be sleeping, and how we should be exercising? Let's talk about, let's talk about eating first. Let's talk about time-conscious eating. Uh, the timing of the daily events of your life is the proof that creative consciousness is directing your existence, my mentor Adano Lay put it. And let's do it this way. Uh, how timing was how this was interpreted that timing and resonance works is uh, maybe two or three centuries ago a man hung about a hundred grandfather clocks on a wall and within 24 hours it took just 24 hours to do all of the clocks tuned to the biggest clock well what's the biggest clock in our environment the sun up there in the sky that's the <laughs> clock we're timed to. That's so right. when we get out of time, we pay the price. People who work shift work get sick much more often. People on night shift even get sick more often. But when yeah. you resonate, you have those split shifts, you know, the, uh, the uh, what do you, eight to four and then four to 12 and then 12 to et cetera, et cetera. They get sick. So they've known about that for a long time that uh, people get sick when they work out of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's go over the eating thing. You know how, like, what foods are, are and why are certain foods the best are more uh, sorbable in the morning, and then what foods are best to eat in the middle of the day, and then what best foods are eaten into the evening. Well, you know, the ancient Chinese knew that all of our organs have a time clock to them. They knew that the lungs are most active from three to five in the morning, and indeed. I have an AMA booklet, about 120 pages, explaining why to give asthma drugs at four in the morning. And no mention was mentioned of the Chinese technology in that book, but there they were, they proved. If a person has an allergy, they're going to have an allergic reaction at exactly 10.30 at night. So if you have a so-called allergic reaction at four in the morning, it's not an allergic reaction, it's an asthma attack. You have a subclinical asthma attack or an asthma attack. And what fixes it? A cup of coffee, which grows on a tree. Because trees get the light first, and the first light is at the first part of the day. And as the light proceeds through its frequencies to midnight, if we time with that light, 
or time with our organs. The Chinese worked this out to such detail that your lung time was followed by your large intestine time, your stomach time, because you poop before you eat, and then your spleen time to help process the food that comes from the stomach, then your heart time, then your small intestine time, bladder time, kidney time, circulation sex time, that's the time to have your romantic dinners, triple heater times, the time to say your place or mine, gallbladder time, liver time, and back again, the cycle goes on and on and on. We That's go great. from liver to, uh, to uh, lung over and over and over again. These times are hardwired into us. It's not like you have a choice about it. It goes on whether people try to, it's like surfing a wave and missing the wave. If you miss the wave for a surfer, it can be disastrous. You end up in the coral. Right. Okay, so uh, so then tell us what foods are best to eat in the morning. Foods that grow on trees, right? Tree foods, exactly. We're designed for the upper body. Even looks like the products of a tree. Look at uh, look at a, an almond. Almond. Uh, is amygdala in Greek. We have something in our brain called an amygdala. Look at a walnut. It What's has corrugations. It yeah. has manganese. It has uh, the same things and looks just like a brain as it's in there. Look at uh, pistachios. They look like eyes. And indeed, you see, I'm not wearing glasses now. I think when I was down there, you saw me always wearing my glasses here. Well, after 24 years, by eating this way, I don't need my glasses anymore. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that's really good. So, so that's a benefit right there, I would say. <laughs> Absolutely. So in the morning, we basically like fruit and nuts, things that grow on trees in the morning, right? Fruit and nuts, and they look like it. Look at, uh, let's take a lemon. It's basically a lymphatic gland. A yeah. lemon and a grapefruit, they look like a woman's breast, right? There you go, and it's a great lymphatic deal. Uh, Voltaire, the famous philosopher, he got rid of smallpox by having lots of lemons. I mean, he drank gallons of lemon juice. <laughs> okay, so so then how about then in, in the midday? What foods are best in the midday then? Now, midday is going to be a grass family. The grass family escaped from the understory. And what's the grass family? All your grains, your wheat, your rice, your all of those things. If you don't want that, uh, because a lot of people think, uh, what is it called, grain belly or something like that. Grain uh, brain. <laughs> yeah, grain brain and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, a lot of that is untrue. It's because of what they've done genetically, modified right. the grain since 1888, not right. since 1990, like they give us that BS. Right. But anyway, uh, your grass family, also your plant family that grows closer to the ground, your kale, your lettuce, your tomatoes, your bell peppers, uh, your cucumbers, all of those foods are right there in the middle range of eating. And they do really well for your intestinal system. Your small intestine loves tomatoes. It loves uh, squash. Squash is especially good for repairing the small intestine. And so what, what about animals then? Animal food, animals are above, are above the ground. So if you're going to eat animal food, it's best to eat them in the midday, is that right? Generally, the midday, except the things like fish, which are underwater and don't get the light, they get what's left. There's no light. So that's, that's for evening, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and okay, the, deeper, so, the deeper the fish, uh, the deeper the fish lives, there's no light. So you're right. in the dark, just like a root food, like a potato is under the ground. So a potato is a nighttime food. That's why a book was written, Potatoes Not Prozac. You don't drink <laughs> milk before you go to sleep. You drink, you eat a potato before you go to sleep. <laughs> okay. And then in the evening, so, so then you, you want to eat things that are in the ground or in the water. So you want to eat fish and, you, and a, any kind of root or things that are in, in, the, in the ground, right? Potatoes, turnips, uh, carrots, uh, beets, the celery root, and also the bottom part of the celery. You notice the celery knows the difference between light too. It chlorophylls itself from the upper part Right. But there's a bottom part that's white, white. white and that yeah. part. Also asparagus. Without light, you grow it underground like the French do, and you get white asparagus. But as soon as you expose it to the light, you get chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a midday element and is not a nighttime element. And if you get chlorophyll at night, when people eat salads at night, they pay a price for it. 
So it's better to eat your salad in, in, in the noontime, huh? Unless you have a carrot salad, no problem okay. there. Okay. Carrot beet salad, delicious. A okay. jicama carrot salad, yummy. Okay. okay. So I, I know you, you've mentioned that, you know, how somehow we've gotten, you know, the, the standard thing of, uh, like eggs and potatoes are some, most people eat for breakfast when, when they should be eating them in the evening. And, and I know you said that some people say if they have a, a problem, say, digesting eggs because they're eating them in the morning, but then they try and go back and start eating them in the evening, they won't have that problem. So that's, that's what you can try. So if any food that you're found that you like, but you, you're having trouble digesting it, maybe it's because you're eating it at the wrong time of day. So try eating it at the correct time and see how that, how, how that changes. It might, be, it might really work for you. Yeah. Actually, you can triple your calories and lose weight. That's the yeah. amazing thing. Maybe the most amazing thing about eating solar nutrition or eating on time. Right. Gas, fat is gas pressure. Here's an amazing fact. During the Second World War, over 1,000 servicemen, their stomachs and intestines exploded when they were airmen. When they went up and there wasn't the pressurization uh, that we have in modern planes, mm -hmm. their intestines blew up. Because obviously, if you have more pressure within your stomach and less outside, yeah. what happens? So many people actually blow up. In fact, do you know people's stomachs have blown up from taking baking soda? And they're advising people to take baking soda now? Now, it's really rare to do. But if you don't yawn and you don't pass gas, guess what? You're in danger of actually exploding and hemorrhaging your stomach or intestines. Yeah. Many so-called gastrointestinal leakage and hemorrhaging is caused by eating out of time. Yeah, eating out of time. All right, well, let's move on to, uh, to uh, exercising. That's your bag. <laughs> well, and you're yes. good at it, too. <laughs> well, let's just, just tell us then what, what are the best times. Let's do the, the three main things. What's the best time then for doing aerobic exercise? In lungs. You said lung, the time is in the morning, right? So it's best to do aerobic exercise in the morning. Is that right? Uh, yes, no, maybe. It's good to do uh, your light, uh, uh, your, your exercises that require anaerobic exercises, like yoga at that point. Because strangely enough, the lungs are its strongest with carbon dioxide, not with oxygen. Your oxidation level is strongest exactly 180 degrees from that at urinary bladder time. The lungfish used its bladder to breathe through to crawl onto the land. Our bladder and lungs are connected. Why, it, why do smokers, cigarette smokers, get bladder cancer? Duh, because they're related intimately. Mm. So anything you want to do to protect your lungs, you have asthma, you go to three to five in the afternoon, it's a polar opposite at bladder time, you eat melons and then you have no more asthma. Isn't that interesting? Okay, but again, now tell us, tell us what, <laughs> tell us what aerobic, so when would you recommend is, is the ideal time to do aerobic exercise? That's uh, nine to 11, which is your secondary lung time. There's three okay. shunts to lungs, and that's okay. when you do your exercise. Okay. One is going to be spleen pancreas time, when you want to lose weight and do mostly aerobic. Then three to five in the afternoon is when you want to gain weight and make muscle mass. So now there's an but yeah, and, and then triple heater time is the best time to swim. That's the best time for swimming athletes to build up their speed so they can do it at other times because they're not going to be uh, tested for swimming at 9 to 11 at night at triple heater time, but that's the best time they can train and prepare for it. Okay, very good. All right, let's move on to sleeping. Let's move on to sleeping. Uh, one more postscript to exercise. Okay. If you want strength, kidney time. It's the exception to the rule. The other four I gave you, you'll notice, are at 90 degree angles to each other. There's a reason for that. Lung, spleen, uh, urinary bladder, and triple heater are like almost astrology. It's all almost mystical, but they work together. Your digestive organs involve kidney, and there's actually three polarities of four that work mathematically in your body to do that. So, uh, but kidney is out of, uh, 
out of phase and it actually builds strength. Your grip strength is definitely strongest between five to seven at night. And now the next subject was? Sleeping. Sleeping. Yeah, Sleeping. So the best time to sleep? There are nocturnal creatures and there are uh, diurnal creatures. And we are diurnal. We do millions and millions and millions of sunrises and sunsets. We're getting organized to sleep during the day now and stay awake at night. Well, there's a price to pay. So basically, when the sun goes down, you should be turning your brain off. And by midnight, not too much thinking should be done. That's the time to meditate, to contemplate, and build up our health rather than our brain cells. Many times we're so smart, we outsmart ourselves. We use our brains against ourselves. It's like that old photograph by Ron Cobb or that cartoon where it shows man showing his superiority over the animals. And he's looking at a bullfrog and he's pressing a button connected to his brain and an atomic explosion is happening on his brain. Well, on some levels, we are polluting the planet, polluting our bodies because we know all these words and languages and sciences, but we haven't got the common sense to look at a watch and time our own bodies to timing. <laughs> we do to have a show, you get a show together, we have to talk, what? you go to a doctor's appointment, but our own body, we make no appointment with our own body. We're killed by friendly fire. So would you say it's basically, uh, basic, but like 10 to six, is it 10 in the evening to six is, is, a, is a good basic ideal range? Ideally, a healthy person will only need to sleep uh, from 10 to three in the morning. A person that doesn't wake up three in the morning is not healthy. Now, a lot of us aren't healthy. I haven't been doing it lately. There was a time I could get by with two hours of sleep and I gave up sleep entirely one time a week. But due to stresses and times and coronaviruses and what that we yeah. have and finances, we get stressed out. But a truly health per healthy person is like my Swami mentor who slept not at all. He didn't need to sleep any. Now, uh, Wu Dang Chen, another teacher of mine, he sleeps two hours a night. Anyone who sleeps more, or the more sleep you need, the unhealthier you are. Uh, this can vary if you're working out. Uh, when you first do bodybuilding, you need a lot of rest, but you don't have to be asleep while you do that. The delta brain wave, that is all that is required, and a true yogi can be awake while he's asleep. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, that's why, I mean, that's why these people can get by on less sleep because they know how to do deep meditation. That's why they don't require sleep. But the average person can, doesn't know how to do that. They're not even meditating at all, you know. So, so I, I saw, because they have run cognitive studies on people, and for every hour that you get less than seven hours of sleep, you don't perform as well on tests. But like say, because, but if, yeah, if you know how to meditate, well, then, yeah, you don't need that much sleep. Because or eat on time. That's one of the functions all of eating things. on time. Exactly. You need all these less things. sleep. Right. Okay. And so, well, we, we, okay, we covered eating, sleeping, and exercising. I think that's about all, all we really have time for in this training. But as always, you know, I always encourage you, if you want to learn more about this, uh, you know, you're going to have all the contact information of our experts. You'll have Adam's <clears throat> information and how you can contact him and, and check out his books and all his, his, uh, his trainings. So I always like to end by, by saying that uh, if you have any ideas, you know, it's, it's one thing, as you know, knowledge without action is useless, right? So you, you can give people a lot of knowledge, but if they don't actually take action on it, it's not going to do them any good. So any, any ideas that how you may inspire people to actually try and implement some of these recommendations? I've been eating this way since 1975. That's, uh, what's that, 45 years, something like that? 45 revolutions around the sun? Yeah. The easiest way is start gradually. Anytime a person gets fanatically into a diet right. and does everything right, because I do things other people aren't capable of doing. And it's habit now. I, can't, I almost can't do otherwise. I wake up in the morning, I have my almonds, and I have my food automatically. Just like most people wake up and have their bacon and eggs 
at a certain time in the morning, they're already timed into it. So first start gradually, start adding a uh, morning food like a banana into their cereal if they're not used to it and work gradually because fanaticism, I find that people who are the most fanatic and start out the most fanatical, give it up. Yeah, that's, that's right. So really just like, yeah, any extremes are not good. And that's why all these extreme diets don't work. And anything extreme is, is, is not, it's not going to be sustainable. All right, now, Adam. Now, of course, I was lucky. I started extremely and it worked for me because I've been doing <laughs> it for 45 years. But most people, I find it really doesn't work that way. Right, it doesn't work. All right. Well, thank you so much. And so, again, both Adam and I, you know, we really encourage you to embrace some of this information and just give it a try, you know, and we're really confident that if you do, uh, you really, you'll really get some good benefits. And it's, it's really all about, you know, trying to become as healthy as you possibly can, because the healthier you become, the better your life becomes. And then everyone you touch, their life becomes better as well. And that's what we're all about. So thanks very much for watching. Thank you, Adam, for sharing all that information with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me, Rico. Thank you.